All right, so let's go ahead and create the update welcome message page. So this is going to be the last page that we're going to have to create uh, because, like I said, for our dashboard, the only of uh, not dashboard for Discord bot, we only really have two main functionality functionalities, which is the command prefix update and the welcome message. Like I said, if your dashboard, if your bot had way more features, you could do something similar like this. Okay, or you can create more the different uh, pages to to manage it. But if you also don't want to put everything in in, in different pages, and you want to have it in one page, you can also do that too. You can also even create a reusable modal. So instead of creating pages, whenever you click on one of these, it'll display a modal, and then it'll display like, the form and everything, and you can just modify that. But like I said, I I encourage you all to try other things yourself. This is just like a basic general guideline on how to set this up, or how to like you know do the basics. Okay. So let's go ahead and create the last page, which is just the welcome message page. So uh, this one is going to look very similar to our guild prefix page. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and create a general styled component, and this is going to be uh, this is going to be called page container, and this is just going to be uh, a page. Actually, no, I'm going to just call this page. Okay, so this page styled component is just going to have all of the basic uh, properties, CSS properties for every single page. So, every, so that way, instead of having to uh, set the padding for every single page, we uh, in inline styles, we can just use a styled component. Okay, so uh, let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so all of our pages are going to, that way all our pages will look exactly the same. So you can see right over here in guild prefix page, we had set, uh, not guild prefix, sorry. In category page, we had this right over here set to 50 pixels. So instead of having each page with different um, padding, we can go ahead and uh, have like an actual general page with the same styles, okay? So let me go ahead and fix that real quick. So uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to remove that. Okay, perfect. And the guild prefix page is good. Home page style. I'm going to leave that alone because that's going to be, that's different. Menu page, we will do that as well. Okay, and then welcome message page. Let's go back to the menu page. I'll just make sure. Okay, yeah, that looks fine. Perfect. All right. So let's go to welcome message page now, which is right over here. And let's go ahead and set this up. So uh, instead of having the div now, we now have the page component. And then we can go ahead and create a, uh, not create, but like reuse the container component. And I'm going to go ahead and use the title. Whoops. And we'll call this update welcome message. You can also add like a description too if you want to, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, okay, so uh, for the update welcome message, we're going to need two things. We're going to need a dropdown as well. The dropdown, which is going to show all of the uh, channels that the user can select. And then we're gonna need the, uh, the current message, uh, which is going to be a text area, okay? Let's start with the dropdown first, so. Um, let's see. I'm not sure if we really need a label for the dropdown or, or yeah, for the select box, but I will add that anyways. Um, so let me do this. Uh, cause I've never really, I don't really use select dropdown box as much. So it's going to be a little bit tricky for me, but let me start off with just setting up a simple, uh, I'll set up a div and inside this div, we'll have a div to hold the label and I'll call this current channel. And then we're gonna have to have a select. And for the select, we're gonna have to have some options as well. I'm just, I'm gonna put random options for now. Okay. One, two, three, one, two, four, one, two. And like I said, these are going to be uh, channel, these are gonna be channel IDs. Okay, so they're gonna be, so they're going to have the ch name of the channel and it's gonna show the channel ID. But for the actual value, it's going to be the channel ID. But we also want to show the selected one. Uh, so let me see. For the selected one, uh, there should be a way where we can show like the, the one that's selected. I think what we could do is we can just check to see. 
uh, we can just check the guild configuration to see which one is selected. And then we can just set the uh, the, the selected one to the, the current, because to the ID. So for example, the option, there, there's a selected option, or, there, or, there, or there's an attribute called selected for the option tag. So if I set selected for 126, if I refresh, it's gonna show 126. Okay, so we can do that. But what's next is we need to figure out how we can style this select. So like I said, I think you can style the select without any issues. I don't think you can style the, op you cannot style like the options though, which is unfortunate. Um, we should at least be able to get rid of the arrow or we can also just create our own uh, drop down if we want to. But I'm not going to do that because that's just going to take way too much time. So we'll just do whatever we can with the drop down. Okay. But I think we should be able to do a lot. Yeah, we should be fine, honestly. Um, background color, set that to inherit. Whoa. Here we go. Color, set that to... And right now, obviously, I'm just setting all of these to... Uh... Yeah, this is going to be just fine. I wonder if we can do a border radius, though. That would be cool if we can do a border radius. Oh, we could. Yeah, that's great. We can definitely do a border. Okay, that's great. Yeah, we can definitely style select. So let me go ahead and just create a styled component. Because like I said, I don't really like using inline styles. Because for stuff like this, we can reuse this over and over again. So it makes sense to put this in the style component. So let's set the padding. We'll set it to 10 pixels. Fonts. Family will be DM Sans. Background. Color. Uh, set that to inherit. Color will be white. And border radius will be 5 pixels. And we can just get rid of this. Okay. Like I said, uh, I'm not going to worry about styling the options for now. Uh, what's going on over here? Oh, it's because the options are... The options have a color of white. Yeah, we'll have to fix that. Yeah, like I said, I'm not going to bother styling the options because I don't really think we can do that anyways like if i put style over here i think i could definitely change the color to black at the very least yeah but if we wanted to like add padding to it i don't think that would really work yeah you can't really add padding to the option um font size i don't think you can even change that either oh you could actually but it seems like you can't change you, you cannot change the um uh, you cannot add padding I don't even think you can add a background color as well. Let's find out. Oh, you could. Okay. All right. Yeah. You know what? Let me go ahead and do this. So, all right. So for the options, what we're going to do is we're going to select the option. We'll change the background color. So it seems like if I tried to do inherit, uh, we're not going to, it's not going to work for us. So what we'll do instead is we'll just literally get the background color and do that. So now if I go over here, I should see that right there. Uh, and I think we should be able to change the font size. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we can change the font size of the select. That's not going to be a problem. Uh, and last thing that I want to do is I want to set the width to 100% so it spans all in the bottom. Okay, and yeah, this is not too bad. Obviously, there's you're very limited in what you can uh, and what you can change. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said, we can't even set the padding or the margin, I think. Which is, uh, it kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Not even sure if you can set height. Let me see. Yeah, you can't even do it either. But yeah, I would recommend if you if you really want, you can create your own custom uh, select box, which select drop down. Sorry, it's not too complicated, and you can also add animation too. If you want to, you can also remove this caret from the default. But I'm not going to do that. I'll just leave that alone for now. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and do I think one last thing, which is just get uh, get rid of this uh, border. We're not get rid of, but uh, I want to create our own. So. It's going to be, the color is going to be, oops, color is going to be 393939, perfect. Though I don't really like that because it's a little bit too dark, so maybe we could try 3F. 
yeah that's 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 not too bad i'm gonna also change the uh the padding where is it so padding left and right i want it to be a little bit bigger so let's try 24 pixels that's obviously way too big oh so it seems like the padding actually is aligned so it seems like the padding on the left and right uh will align with the options for with what whatever select is but not only for left and right but not top and bottom uh let's see i'll do padding top and bottom eight pixels left and right we'll do 16 pixels uh no that's yeah no let's try yeah this is fine honestly this is fine when we actually have all of the channels like i said we're going to need to go ahead and uh let me see uh we're going to need to select the default one so this is going to be a little bit tricky so essentially let's say for example if there is no welcome channel that's set we want to go ahead and we want to go ahead and create an option that says please select a channel like this All right but we want this to be disabled though so the user cannot select this right but this is the default value they just cannot select it okay and we'll set the value of this to be something like null or something so that way if they try to submit the if they try to submit this field uh with the please select the channel option it will just like send an error okay but so the way that this will work is let's say for example if the user if the if the uh, bot configuration does not have a channel set we will um show this okay if there is a channel that has already been set we just got to find the one that is set and then just add the selected property and then i'll just show that one okay and for the actual text we can just show the like we can just show the actual we can show the actual text right over here like that and then for the actual value would be the channel id so for example one two four that's how it's going to look like when we actually have the channel uh id and the channel name and we're going to get that from the back end okay um so uh yeah that's pretty much it for for the drop down okay um what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and work on the uh work on the next part the last part which is just the current message okay so for that uh that's just going to be a text area so let's go ahead and do that i'm going to go ahead and put this inside a section okay and I'm going to create another section for the uh, drop down or not the drop down, the text area. So for the label, uh, we are going to put a, a, a label for this or, or we are going to, but we're going to add the ID. Um, I'll just call this uh, message. Okay. Did I add an ID for the prefix or not prefix? Did I add an ID for the input field? I didn't. Let me go back and do that. There we go. Yeah, we need to do that. Okay so a uh, current message and then we're going to add a text area okay so the text area is going to uh look very similar to the input field okay similar in the sense that it's just going to have the, the colors padding i think will just be really the same okay uh so we'll go ahead and set that up so let's look at what it, let's see what it looks like right now so if i do text area um let me give the id of message okay you can see this is what it looks like right now we're obviously going to fix that so first thing i'm going to do is there should be a property where i, I where I, I don't want it to be able to resize There should be something where I can disable the resize. I'll worry about that later. But let's go ahead and just get rid of a lot of these default styles. So we'll do that. So I'm just going to copy and paste a lot of the uh, CSS from the input field. Uh, so font family, background color, it's just all going to be the same. Border radius, same thing. Get rid of the outline. And when we focus on it, literally the same exact thing. You can see right over here. The only thing I need to do is just get rid of this resize, which I'm not sure how to do that. Uh, wait, let me see. So there's actually the CSS property. Just looked it up. It's called resize. Means that's a none. There we go. We shouldn't be able to resize it now. We can also set like a max 
character limit too so that way uh we cannot let it exceed a certain amount of a certain amount of characters which uh in case you weren't aware discord does have a character limit on how many uh, characters you can send okay um cool so that's literally it honestly uh one thing that i will do is i'll go ahead and set the margin on the top to be 10 pixels okay um i'll also do that for the label as well not the label the text area uh and notice how i'm not doing that in the actual styled component because not every single so because let's say for example if i reuse text area uh, every single text area is going to have margin and i might not want that i only want this text area to have margin okay hopefully that hopefully you guys understand that so we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with the select drop down there we go um cool uh, honestly i think that i think i think this turned out to look pretty great honestly in my opinion okay the last thing that we'll do is set up the buttons which is just going to look very similar to what we did in the prefix page so that will literally go down right over here and that's going to be a flex box and the justify content property is going to be flex end because we want everything to go at the end let me go back to the guild prefix page and i'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this paste that in here i'm going to import the button style component up top over here uh and we don't need to worry about setting the uh the button type because we don't have this inside a form field i'm not going to put this inside a form field so uh cool and then we can also oh let me actually add margin not only on the top but top and bottom there we go that's great and I'll also do the same up top over here as well there we go Perfect. So great. So now, oh, one more thing that I should do for the buttons is I forgot to add the cursor. Cool. So when I click on this, we'll also add other stuff too for the buttons, such as uh, when we click on it, we can have like some hover, hover, hover effects, but that's not really too important right now. Okay. All right. So I think honestly, we're pretty much done with all the CSS. I know it took a very long time, but that's literally all of the CSS that we'll have to worry about for now. Um, the next, the next thing that we'll have to do is we're going to have to set up the back end now. Okay. Because we pretty much have done a lot of stuff on the front already. I want to move over to the back end so that way we can actually start doing things such as authentication. We can start setting up, uh, everything else such as, uh, fetching data from the back end. So that way we can populate the front end with the correct information. Okay, once we have the backend set up, we can then go back to setting up stuff such as uh, form validation on the front end because we still need to do that. We haven't done any of that yet. Same thing with um, same thing with the uh, with the uh, form validation for the welcome message as well. Um, and that's pretty much as far as we'll go in terms of validation for these forms. It's pretty straightforward, honestly. Um, anything else that I can think of, uh, I'll probably mention that later on, but that's pretty much it for the CSS portion of this video. I know it was pretty long, um, but uh, yeah. So in the next uh, next couple of episodes, we're going to start working the back end. The back end, we're going to be using Nest.js. Uh, we're going to uh, we're going to focus on setting up everything, such as the authentication sessions, database, everything that we need. Once that's done, we can actually start. Uh, connecting both the front and the back end. Okay, so thank you all for watching uh, this video. I'll see you all in the next episode. Peace out.